So just lift your Bibles with me now and say with me now, Father God in heaven, let your word be in my mind. Let your word be in my heart. Let your word be on my lips. And let your grace show in my life. Amen and amen. So this is Psalm 99. And we hear again about what was happening in the camp with the children of God. It talks about it here in verse um, 6. And it says, Moses and Aaron were among his priests, and Samuel was among those who called upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. And then in verse 7, he spoke to them in the cloudy pillar. They kept his testimonies and the ordinance he gave them. So it's pretty obvious that they were following, the psalmist was showing that they were following what Moses had brought to them originally and how he had set up the tabernacle and the camp of meeting, the tent of meeting. Everything was laid out as God had told Moses to lay it all out. He even put the spirit of God and wisdom into the people who were the creators, the artists, the people who are working with gold and silver and threads and, and you know, textiles. And they created this amazing tabernacle and an amazing camp meeting place, a tent of meeting where the children of, of, of God could go to to worship God before there were any temples created because God had ordained it. Verse 4 says, The king's strength also loves justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. So he says, Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. So it's almost a call to come to the tabernacle. It's a call to worship. It's a call to meeting. You know, In verse 1 it says, The Lord reigns. Let the peoples tremble. Well, when they saw Moses come down from the mountain, they were trembling because his face was shining and and they were really surprised at how the presence of God had done this and it kind of established him as definitely someone who had met with God it says he that's God dwells between the cherubim so there there are the cherubim on the ark of the covenant with the mercy seat between them and God would come down and that's where his presence would be between the cherubim in the ark of the covenant on the mercy seat and he would be in the tabernacle that Moses had created and that ark was in there and God would come and meet with the, with the high priest meet with Moses at the time and then with Aaron the high priest and, and, and so it went down from them and it was where God spoke to his people and then whatever came out of that tabernacle from the high priest that was what they had to do says in verse 2, The Lord is great in Zion, and he is high above all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. So God's presence was above, not only in, filled the Shekinah glory, filled the, the tabernacle and the temple of the meeting, and the cloud was above the camp meeting place. And he was there, and in the daytime they followed the cloud, and at night they followed the fiery pillar and that's what guided them and took them to where God wanted them to be how much of us are going where God wants us to be how much of, a go of us are going where we want to be and literally ignoring any kind of sense of where God wants us to be this is not what God wants God wants us to listen to him and to follow him just as they did 
in the desert when they were following the cloud and following the pillar of fire. It says in verse 8, You answered them, O Lord our God. You were to them God who forgives. So because they followed him, because they trusted in God, because they were obedient to God and, and went where God told them to be and were really showing they were God's people, God also came in with God who forgives. Though you took vengeance on their deeds. So there is a sense in which we still have to be responsible, we still have to accept there are consequences when we are disobedient. Nevertheless, we have this wonderful, loving God who forgives. He made a way of forgiveness. He gave them ways out of when they broke the law and they were disobedient. He made ways for them to gain forgiveness through the sacrifice of animals. That their hands, their sins was laid upon the animals like the scapegoat that was then put out of the camp there was shed blood and we're told without the shedding of blood there's no remission of sins so this order of the law that created this reconciliation back with God through through sacrifice through blood being spelt is shown as a shadow because that's what happened with Jesus Christ we gained our forgiveness because he was hung up to die and his shed blood covers our sins. He became our scapegoat. What an amazing saviour to die in our place. Incredible. What an incredible saviour he is. And it was foreordained. It was there right from the very beginning in the law that there was this, you know, way of, of God working out how we were to be forgiven. And forgiveness is, is something that is wonderful for us to be forgiven uh, because of this merciful God who loves us. It says here in verse 9, Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. So there is a holiness that is complete in God, that he is completely holy. That's why... Moses could not see his face. No man has seen his face. We can't see his face because we would be burned up because he is pure and holy and he, no sin can enter. No fault can enter that glory. And so to get to be with him in heaven, to be in that place where God dwells, we couldn't go on our own. We couldn't ever be there by keeping the law because we never could keep it perfectly we can only ever be transported there because we're under the blood of Christ that covenant that he created with us that God created and, and the sacrifice didn't come from us the sacrifice came from God the Father himself he provided the sacrifice for us in his only son what an amazing God we serve so this is really important to understand what God has done for us is phenomenal. How much are we going to follow God? How much are we going to be obedient to God and stop trying to run our own lives and try to follow what God wants? And whatever that might be is something we have to be prepared. If there's any sacrifice at all, it has to be the sacrifice of our flesh. It has to be the sacrifice of what we wanted and our agenda in life and go with what God has called us to, which is sometimes completely the opposite to what we think is best for us and what we want. You know, it sometimes, you know, it strikes me as quite futile, <laughs> even trying to plan anything, because it's what God wills at the end of the day. And you can plan all you like, but if God's not in it, it's not going to be successful. It's not going to work. Things are going to go wrong. And it's something that we need to seek his face and not his hands. 
when we seek the presence of God like Moses did, he, he sought God, he sought his face. God says, no, you can't see my face. You know, I can only let you see my presence from my back because you're going to be burned up if you ever come into my presence in that sense. And so if we really want to be you know, in the right place and doing the right things and be blessed, then we ne need to be in God's will. We need to be where God puts us, wherever that is. And we might, we might want to do something else. But it's the same as Jonah. You know, you might want to do something else and go, go traveling, <laughs> go away from God, go the opposite way God wants you to. Well, it's not going to end well. <laughs> you know, you're going to end up back where God put you in the end because it can't work that way. And so this is really important for us as we make plans for our life, as we determine what we're going to do, we've got to seek God. What does God want us to do? Where does God want us to be? That's why we always say, you know, blossom where you're planted. Wherever God's planted you, that's where you need to stay, unless God moves you somewhere else. And if God moves you somewhere else, you need to go. If God calls you somewhere else, it will become obvious. It won't be a game. It won't be, oh, I don't know. It will, be, it will become very obvious. If you ask God, what's the next stage? If you feel unsettled, that unsettled feeling is, is there for a reason. What is the unsettled feeling? Is it the flesh rising? And this is where a lot of people have problem. They mistake the flesh rising because they 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 want to do things. They 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 you know they they're a bit frustrated because you know God's not working at their pace. You know they they don't want to wait on God. They just want to do things. You know because we, maybe we've got a bit of you know frustration in us that we we think we should be doing something. Um, and, and and the flesh rising sometimes makes people think, well, obviously, because I'm I'm active and I can do this and I can do that, then I should be doing that and, and almost convince themselves that God's saying that's the right thing to do. And, and sometimes people even lie and <laughs> say, God told me to do this, when in actual fact it's their own imagination and it's because they want to do something, so they've had to back it up with something because... There may be people they're letting down. There may be people they're moving away from. There may be even ministry that they need to be doing, which has become difficult. But they need to stay faithful and carry on. And yet God is not calling them somewhere else. It's because they are frustrated because they don't want to deal with whatever it is. Why should I have to do this, God? You know, well, we do what God's calling us to do. And even when we see people, you know, in situations that we think, why on earth is God doing that? Sometimes I look at my mother and think, why on earth is God allowing that? Why on earth is, is it, well, as Yoli said the other day, you know, sometimes there are reasons. God has his reasons. And so sometimes that is important to understand that in our understanding, it seems, what's the point? But other things will come out of these things that we don't understand and we don't know. And so we have to leave it with God. We have to allow God to be God. We don't know everything and we can't know everything. But we can be obedient. We can honour God and trust God. That's the most important thing, to trust God for our future and where we're going and what we're doing. And that's what this is really talking about here. The Lord reigns. Let the people tremble, you know. It, God's in charge, whether you like it or not, God's in charge. So, you know, take it seriously. Don't be just running around like a headless chicken. Take it seriously. God's in control. We need to ask God. We need to come before God and say, what's happening, God? I feel something in my spirit. Some, I feel you're going to do some new work. You're going to call me to do something. You're going to... You know, show me if that's right. Tell, tell me if you want me to do something else. Where do you want to move me? Sometimes he just wants you to stay where you are.
to fulfill what he's actually started and to show your faithfulness that you are a soldier in God's army and you are on duty in that place and we don't know the reasons why but we have to trust God for it and so this is really important that we understand this in our lives of where we're going and what we're doing we've got to start thinking more about God you know we've all made these mistakes of running before God calls you yeah everyone makes these mistakes and so we have to wise up we have to get with God's program that's it that's what I believe the psalmist is talking about here in that we need to be aware you know, that God is going to speak to us through the, the cloudy pillar through what we see is a fog almost there is a sense in which we can look at it like that and think well God is still going to speak to us and obviously in, in the gospel that we read earlier God speaks out of this cloud on Mount Sinai on the, the Mount of Olives he speaks to them and so we, we have to be aware that God speaks to people at different places there were some holy places you know Mount Sinai was where Moses where this was the mountain of the Lord you know Mount of Olives Jesus was there and he was with his disciples there and he spoke there and you know this was a new covenant it was a new place a new space and God was working there so sometimes God moves where he's working but we have to catch up we have to know where he's going and and look for God and, and find out what God wants us to do where he wants us to be you know he's between the cherubim but he's not between the cherubim and the Ark of Covenant anymore he's, he's between the cherubim in heaven but he's still talking to us and he's given us his Holy Spirit to speak to us inside to give us affirmation to give us confirmation and to guide us and lead us what's this guiding about? well this is where God is talking to each one of us and saying this is what I want you to do you know this is where I want you to be I want you to stay here and be faithful I want you to move here and be obedient and follow me and and you know be prepared for a new a new game a new world a new situation like he did with Abraham bringing him out of the era of Chaldeans he took him out completely took him out you know 